Hey guys, we're in Bloomington slash Normal, Illinois. Is that right? Yeah. So we're gonna talk. <laughs> we're gonna talk performance baggers today with Justin K. So I think first time I met you was at VTV in Milwaukee um, at the showcase at the, the Harley Museum. Kind of yes. Um, kind of, what's your story, man? Tell us a little about you, kind of what you do, how you got into bikes, that kind of deal. Um, so bikes were probably not my original passion. Um, I used to be big into cars back in the day, you know, teen years, Fast and the Furious, all yeah, that yeah, stuff, right? Yeah. Um, shortly after that, probably in my early 20s, I got into motorcycles, mm -hmm. uh, mainly crotch rockets, right? We all need yeah, to uh, yeah. feed that young sensation. So I guess everybody uh, starts either dirt bikes or crotch rockets. Yeah, too. dirt bikes and crotch rockets. So I went through a couple variations of uh, crotch rockets, and then as I started to ride some more, um, I wanted to go longer distance, mm -hmm. right? Um, longer distance required something a little more comfortable, so then I moved over to some cruisers, but they were always metric bikes. Mm -hmm. I never never owned a Harley, never thought about owning a Harley, mm -hmm. um, but my friends, they constantly pushed me. Oh, yeah. Harley Davidson, right? Yeah. Best bike ever, you should yeah. get one. And eventually, after Harley came out with the Milwaukee 8, I caved. They were starting to bring some stuff into the motor that was you know, present in a lot of the metric mm -hmm. bikes mm -hmm. in the past. So I thought, okay, why not? I'll give it a shot. Um, and on, honestly, to be honest with you, the first time I rode the thing, I thought it was slow as shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, fair, yeah. So uh, from there, it started. You know, I started taking it apart and, and so figuring was, out what I could do to make it better. Was this your first Harley then? This is my first Harley Davidson. It's a uh, 2018 Road Glide Special. Okay. What was your what was your first bike this period? Uh, first bike Yamaha R6. Okay. And then I went through probably two more Yamaha R6s and uh, graduated from there. Went to a leader bike. Okay. So Yamaha R1 and yeah. then uh, from there, once I started to want to ride longer distance, went to a Yamaha Raider, mm -hmm. which is a big power cruiser. Um, from there, I had another metric bike that was a bagger. And then finally, I made the jump and, and went to the Harley. So, once we get into this bike, everybody will see, you guys have some pretty high level customization in terms of like performance baggers, especially with the newer bikes. So, when did you when did you guys get into like modifying bikes to that level? Did you do, do that with any of your, any of your old bikes? Or? So, not necessarily with my old bikes, but at the same time, we were also building motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So, we were doing a lot of Yamaha XS650, so taking the standard XS650, uh, chopping the frame up, turning them into hardtails, uh, doing a lot of inverted front suspensions, okay. big brakes, uh, a lot of custom work on those, rebuilding the motors, okay. all that good stuff. All right, all right, so, all right, so 2018 Road Glide, obviously you've went the performance bagger route, um, looks awesome and simple and clean, it's kind of like how I like it. Kind of high level, like what were you shooting for here? Were you solely just trying to get the maximum performance out of this, or in terms of aesthetics, did you have an idea in mind? Kind of. So I have um, a soft spot for white. All my vehicles are white. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw this motorcycle, they made the engine changes. I was like, well, that's the one I'm going to start with. Okay. Um, when I originally got it, the performance bagger stuff was really starting to kick up. So I picked it up late 2017. Okay. Um, I know there was some performance bigger stuff prior to that, but it, it hadn't really taken mm -hmm. off yet. 
So early stages, I mean, I did some of the basic stuff, bars, you know, T-bars, um, you know, more, more upright seated position. And then I went through a bunch of different variations of suspension. At first, I wasn't big on the, um, you know, lifting the bike up. Mm -hmm. And it was probably just because I didn't, I didn't really know. I didn't understand at yeah. that time. Um, rode it for a while before I started getting the bike up in the air. Um, what you do it for ground, ground clearance, right? Yeah, ground clearance. And it just took me back to more of my sport bike mm -hmm. riding era, you know, having the bike up in the air, the ability to not drag hard parts everywhere. Do you know how, about, how much higher your front sits than stock? Uh, so the front is two inches higher than okay. stock. Um, the rear is two inches higher as well. I'm running a 14 and a quarter inch okay. rear shock on the back. So that's the max you can get before the swing arm starts hitting the oil pan. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Let's actually talk about that a little bit because that was one of the first things that impressed me most about um, your build was the inverted front isn't like a kit you bought. You created, you guys created trees and everything for that, correct? Yes, absolutely. So the front end is a complete custom front end. Um, the, the forks are off of a sport bike. Um, the internals have been completely rebuilt, all okay. race tech internals, so it's been sprung for the correct weight of me and the bike. It's been valve, both compression and revalve for the weight of the bike and myself. Um, the trees are one-off, custom. Uh, my buddy drew the trees. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kay Thompson, mm -hmm. 108 on Instagram, if anybody cares. That guy's the worst. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so serious. he drew the trees. We're kind of like a sounding board for each other. I had some input on, you know, let's change this here, let's change that there. Um, so we're constantly, you know, throwing ideas back and forth. But he did the work on drawing them up, um, drew the trees. Also our fork stop, or not our fork stop, but our fork protector set up mm -hmm. along with the fender mounts. Okay. All custom. Um, trees were drawn by Kyron and then machined. We had Justin from my machine okay. tree, uh, machine the upper and the lower trees. Okay. So yeah, that's where we ended up. Um, got about, I don't know, 5,000 miles on them. We're kind of in a little R&D phase right okay. now. Um, constantly making some little tweaks, but we've, we've got a really good uh, base starting point. Okay. Yeah. And you're running race tech, right? What did you say? All race tech internals. Okay. Yep. And like, that's not like someone you sent off, had somebody do your internals for you. You guys did that, right? Yeah. So uh, race tech does offer that. You can send your forks out and have them build them to however you want. Um, I did the builder's kit. So all the shim stacks were built by me, mm -hmm. um, installed by me. Yeah, the whole nine yards. Cool, and Galfer and Brembo? Yes, Galfer, Galfer front rotors, um, Brembo brakes come off of a uh, Gixxer okay. sport bike. Okay. Um, awesome stopping power, can't complain. Yeah. And then you've got the RLNS wide spoke wheels? Yes, so Ness wide spoke wheels, obviously had to go with the gold, um, stick with the whole theme of the white and the gold. No. What's the, what's, <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah. What front fender is that? So that is a Hoffman Designs front fender. Um, it originally started its life as one of his few uh, white carbon okay. front fenders. Uh, he did a run of white carbon front fenders um, way back when, and I was able to grab one, and I ran it, the white carbon, for mm -hmm. a while. Okay. Uh, but then once I started to you know, do some more small aesthetic changes, um, I decided to go ahead and paint it. So underneath there is one of one of his old relics. Now I actually prefer when people paint the carbon because I feel like everybody does like every you everybody wants to show off their carbon, which is fair. Right. I get that, but if sometimes I feel like it looks weird with the bike, and ultimately you should be buying the carbon to make the bike lighter, make the bike go faster. So like paint it to work with the rest of your bike. And yeah, I I completely agree with that. Um, you know, originally it was the, the white carbon design fender, and I was like, yeah. That looks pretty good, but then as you start to bring the bike together and finish it off, mm -hmm. it just, it's a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm much more of a fan of painted carbon. Mm -hmm. um, also a fan of some exposed, but still yeah. primarily painted. You're right? starting to see some of those paint jobs where yeah. like guys still want to show up their carbon, and so mm -hmm. the painter's actually incorporating the carbon to show through with like some paint. Yep, really absolutely good. looks great. And I probably would have went that route, except I have it's a, it's a white carbon fiber, yeah, yeah. you know, so then I would have had to try to get 
Hoffman to make me a dash, yeah. rear fender, mm -hmm. and he's just not producing that white carbon anymore. So I got you. Um, if I wanted to go that route, I would have to swap all that yeah. stuff out. I got you. So you said 14s in the rear, what are these? Uh, those are also Racetech. Okay. Uh, Racetech G3Ss, those are custom built to okay. your weight, weight oh, of the bike. Nice. Um, completely adjustable. Uh, it's got uh, high and low speed compression. Okay. Also rebound, okay. and then some height. And you're adjusting all that yourself, right? All of it. That's a. It's a it constantly tinkering. That's that's impressive. Like uh, like obviously going from stock suspension and just upgrading is like a huge like another level of like in terms of performance and improving your ride. But then you get a lot of suspensions where you can adjust your compression and all that kind of stuff. And it takes a lot of dedication yes. to figure that stuff out and to be able to like continue to adjust that. And yeah, you're you're constantly messing with it um, based on where you're riding, what the road conditions mm -hmm. are. Like I said, I went through a couple different variations of the suspension in the beginning of this bike. I did, you know, I did Legends cartridges up front. I did Legend Revo A's up back, and then I went to the Revo Arcs, which mm -hmm. had a little more uh, adjustability. And then I went to the Legend um, Axios up front that had the two, the plus mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. to get a little more height. And then finally, I decided, all right, well, let's go. To, let's take another step, right? Okay. <clears throat> We started designing the trees, um, which we knew were going to fit these these sport bike forks, and then we decided let's you know let's go all out. Let's do full race tech internals. Um, let's do race techs out back. Get the bike up in the air. Mm -hmm. Get the handling where it should be. Um, you know as good as it can get for a big bike like this. Mm -hmm. And but it is it's it's a lot of adjustment. It's constantly you're constantly adjusting for based on where you're riding. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. I mean, it's, it's, I feel like the suspension of this bike is the most impressive thing because the custom stuff and the fact that you're doing all the adjustments like continually yourself, yeah. um, the amount of time it takes to figure all that out and everything. And we're constantly learning. It's, yeah. it's not a one and done sort of deal. You know, we could go down the road, um, hit a couple twisties, mm -hmm. 10 miles, all right, let's adjust this, mm -hmm. go back, run it again, and then, you, you know, get it dialed in as best as you can. That means you're ready to go to bag of racing lane, man. That's some serious knowledge right there. <laughs> no, I, keep, uh, I keep thinking about it, but I would love to get on the track with an actual sport bike. <laughs> yeah, that would that'd be a lot of fun. I'm, st I'm, I'm still, I can't get that out of the back of my mind, but yeah, yeah I would love to ride a bagger on the track. Um, I would love to take this one on the track if I wasn't, wasn't, uh, scared it might go down but yeah that would you be, never know <laughs> put the, you put this much work and money into something right. like it's yeah yep. it's yeah probably wouldn't enjoy yourself if you were out yeah. there yeah I'd, I'd probably be a little worried about you know dropping it or, or low siding it or something along those lines but it does get ridden hard mm -hmm. um it's definitely not uh not something that i just put around on so okay. and then you got kraus pull that riser set right with their day setup? Yeah, so my original setup was actually, um, I had the straight risers. Um, being being a little bit shorter, uh, I decided to swap them out after the fact. So I went with the pullback plate and mm -hmm. then I went with the kickback risers. It just okay. puts me in a much better riding position. Um, not only for long, mm -hmm. long rides, but also, you know, when, just you're, when you're trying to ride harder, general, it sets yeah, me a little bit up and more forward. 100%. Those are 10 inches, that what you said earlier? Yeah, those 10 inch risers, and then I think the bars may have like two and a half inch rise on them. So, okay. roughly 13, somewhere around there overall. Cool, gotcha. All right, let's jump down, jump into your motor. Uh, yeah, you? so motor is a SNS 124. Uh, it's got a Woods cam in it, um, 64 millimeter intake and throttle body. The whole typical top end stuff that mm -hmm. you would want to do. Mm -hmm. So rocker arm studs, um, piston oiler jets have been gone through. Also have SNS pump and plate. Mm -hmm. in okay. it. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been pretty bulletproof. I've got a little over 17,000 miles on the build. Okay. Uh, hasn't leaked a drop, uh, no something, none of those typical of course, things yeah. that you hear about on Milwaukee 8. Yeah, that's one of the big things that pushed me to finally like jump in the bagger thing was the M8, some of the numbers you see guys pushing out. Then yep. you also hear a decent amount about like people that are pushing those big numbers having issues and reliability kind of. Right. But yeah, it's it's been great. I, I don't have any complaints about it. Um, also went through the motor and did full ARP 12 points. Oh, so there you go. ARP 12 point bolts everywhere, uh, motor trans, 
you name it, it's every bolt has pretty much been taken off and replaced on this bike. There you go. And finishing it off with the Thunderheader, right? Yeah, I had to go with the good old standby Thunderheader. When I originally built the motor, um, I had a Bassani on there. Okay. And we just weren't getting the numbers that we wanted to see out of the motor. Uh, so I did go ahead and, and swap it out for the Thunderheader. You know, aesthetically, I don't love it, mm -hmm. uh, but it makes power. You can't, can't argue with the numbers. You, you can't argue with the numbers. It works. The torque curve uh, is great on it. Um, it. It comes on fast and it, and it stays all the way to the top. It sounds good. I can bounce for that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, wait, what, you know what numbers you're pushing at all? So it's 135s across okay. the board. Oh, so nice. 135 horse, 135 torque. Um, I could probably do some heads, maybe port the port the manifold and get a little more out of it. But I mean, it's great. You know, me being as small as I am and light, you yeah, know, I can kind of keep up with those with those I mean, bigger yeah, numbers. I think you get a certain level. It's like <laughs> yeah. kind of like you see some of the crazy muscle cars put out numbers. At some point, it's just not yeah. usable. And like, I mean, based on your riding style and everything like that, yeah. And when That's you're so. riding hard in the twisties, I mean, I don't need 150, you know, plus horsepower. Um, it does just fine. And then you've got the reliability, you have to do like longer trips with yeah, the baggers. Yeah, it's so, great. Yeah. I mean, I still get great gas mileage. Um, no problems with it there. Cool. And I know you mentioned earlier, like your clearance, your swing arm, your suspension arm. Are you still running a stock swing arm? Yeah, so okay. stock swing arm. Um, got the chain kit going over there. Chain kit, got chain drive, swap. Also did uh, the um, compensator. Okay. Do you, do you stick pretty close to the stock ratio with your... Chain kit. Yeah, so the chain kit is stock ratio. Uh, the compensator is a TTS compensator replacement. Also did a trash basket on it. Okay. And then Screaming Eagle template clutch okay. and the 1275 springs. Okay. Holds okay. it no problem. Whatever power I give it, it no slipping. Cool, nice. You still got your speakers to go along with it too, right? I, I do. Yeah, you know, I'm a sucker for audio. Um, I, know, I know a lot of people don't love it, but Oh, I get it. Like, I mean, it's a bagger. I mean, ultimately, you buy it for like the speakers and screens. So, why a lot of people buy baggers? Like, I don't, I don't mind. I've ripped them out of mine, but that's like my own personal thing. Yes. Yeah. Helmet, listening to my helmet, but no, like, 100% get that. So, yeah, definitely like the audio. Um, I, I know a lot of people are going with the screen swap, replacing the gauges. I mean, I still have mine. I use it for car, you know, car play and. Oh yeah, and uh, navigation all the time when we're going on trips. Oh yeah, I hundred percent get that. A lot of people still use it. I just I think a big reason I'm still yeah. switching mine or planning to switch mine is just like I don't use it for anything. It's it has so right. Um, to be honest, it probably just means I probably should have bought an older bagger. But you can sell that thing in a minute. <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody so, somebody will buy that radio yeah. from you, no problem. Cool man. Uh, what else you got going on? I know we got the blowback yeah, so bags got and. We got the front end, we got the bars, risers, brakes, motor, um, s and intake mm -hmm. with the plus one filter on it. Did all flow motor sports, uh, boards and uh, levers. Um, also got R1 brakes out back. Mm -hmm. So those came from a Yamaha R1. Okay. A mono black caliper. It's pretty cool seeing how many, uh, I guess a lot of people like, I'm just like, buying the ones that go with that, but I've started to see more and more people where, well, I think I've been doing it for a while, I'm just starting to see more of it myself yeah. finally, is they're bringing parts over from um, like other like sport bikes or even like adventure bikes oh, and absolutely. using them for their Harleys. I just did one with Speed Dealer and he had an FXR that he took an inverted front off, inverted front end off a KTM like 1290. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, them, so. you know, those, those forks that are on this bike are from a sport bike. Uh, now that's not to say you can't just bolt them on. Yeah, right? yeah, it takes some work. There's yeah. a lot of a lot of work that goes along with it, but the brakes. I mean, there are companies out there that are making kits for even the stock Harley, you know, front end setups that you can bolt the mm -hmm. uh, sport bike calipers on. Okay. Uh, both front and rear. So the rear brake hangers are Kraus. Okay. And he makes it so you can bolt on any 108 millimeter caliper okay. on yeah. the back. There you go. Cool man. Yeah, I that's mean, pretty, it's... That's nice, man. It's how, it's how I like them. Simple and clean, dude. It's like, obviously, you got, like, a ton of work and performance into this thing, but it's still... It just looks really good. It's not, like, overly flashy or anything like that. Man. Right. I go back and forth constantly. Should I paint it? Should I not paint it? And then I always err on the side of not painting it. I mean, there's... there's Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of baggers that are still running around without paint jobs, mm -hmm. but... 
Um, I just like the clean look. You know, it's it's a uh, you have to have that good balance of color mm -hmm. and cleanliness. So you know, just the small accents of forks wheels mm -hmm. and lower rocker covers. Yep. That's it. No more. No more for me. Yep. I'm not going to go anywhere above that. So no levers, no mirrors. Cool. It's just doing my best to keep it clean. Yeah. That's the big thing for me. It looks great. You got any future plans for it? Anything else you're planning on doing? Um, I mean, I, you know, I struggle a lot of times. Do I need more power? Should I, should I do some heads on it? Uh, maybe a little more engine work. Um, but then, you, you know, I'm kind of just waiting to see what's going to happen. Yeah, what's going to happen next year. In the year. next yeah. couple of years, yeah. right? Will we get lucky and will Harley put out a new um, touring model mm -hmm. with, with a new motor in it? So yeah. I'm interested to see uh, what's going to happen there. Yeah, one of these isn't going to keep up with the, if they drop a 1250 in a bag of frame. It's not going to keep up. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm even hopeful that they'll put even a bigger motor than yeah. that in the bagger frame. Yeah. It's a lot of weight to move around, mm -hmm. so if they can get something in there that's even larger and it's liquid cool. Yeah. Be pretty um, awesome. Higher red line. I mean, it, the thing will be, it'll be a force to reckon with. So, cool. So, if anybody's got. Questions for you about your bike or anything else? What's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, you can DM me on Instagram. It's J R K G Y. That's J R K A G Y. And we'll spell that down below too. Yeah, so, perfect. Cool, man. I appreciate telling you guys having me out. Um, yeah, I'm glad you can make it down. It's yeah. been awesome. It's been a yeah. good time. 100%. Um, bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
I think this is going to go past the whole simple and clean line, clean line I like. <laughs> but like you can like take those and like anodize those like a different color. Yeah. Since I've yeah. got a few gold accents, I could take those. But yeah. like, I don't know if I'm going. Because you got but red calipers, didn't you? No, uh, no, those are gold. The box is red. Oh, okay. And they're gold. Oh. So I'm chroming. Everything's going to be chrome for the most part. Like I'm chrome. The roll, the wheels are contrast right now, so I'm going to chrome them. Mm -hmm. I got the gold. Uh, the obviously. This is all being like clear anode with the with the 